we are recording. Yo, yo. Hello. I'm just going to apologise in advance for anybody who sees this. I have a cold. I'm so sorry. <laughs> a little cold. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm not feeling too well. But we're going to do this. Yeah, for, for bonus <laughs> material, here is a glimpse <coughs> into the... Uh, macro junk shots that I have been using for the image quote quotary. <laughs> <laughs> Closing it down now. Okay. So what is our agenda now? We're doing short stories. And why are we doing short stories? Uh, because we'd like to share our short stories with the world and they need a little bit of work before then. So Yeah. So in in the essence, we're putting together the next uh, Chaos Nova book to be released, mm -hmm. and uh, we have dug out several materials from the forum as well as from our website. Some of which are already uh, almost ready to go. Some of which we have already edited, and those are not the ones that we're going to touch today but we also found a bunch of um, experimental materials uh, yeah that's definitely one way of putting it yeah <laughs> 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 so like uh, drafts and uh, and idea dumps and shit uh, and we are going to refine some of those into proper short stories and while doing so, we're gonna we're gonna use the short story refinement as a method for also talking through some uh, world building matters and and refreshing some ideas and such. And can I just say real quick, uh, yep. if there are any authors listening, uh, I think one or two of these might have come from the challenge I set myself, like the short story in a day challenge, where mm -hmm. I sat down at my computer and I sort of forced myself to write. Um, so even even if they don't go anywhere, there's still material there, and if they don't get used, that's fine. But it's good practice, and I mm -hmm. think it really helped in this instance, definitely. So this, unfortunately, uh, well, not unfortunately, but this was not one of those stories. This is Escape from Caressa. The one we're working on today is Escape from Caressa. Yeah, and this oh. is uh, this is the one that uh, you have shared in the forum, and uh, I have already cracked on it. I had. I have had some ideas regarding to this and and I think you have these here as well. Oh, you do not You do not have my ideas here. Why? Rectify Are they on the forum. Rectify this at this instance. Escape from Caressa. Do, 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 do. Alright. Oh, okay, that's the note about you going to see Top Gun. Uh <laughs> Good times. Let me, see. Let me bring the notes in under the thanks. I hope you enjoy the following. So they're at the top. Um, yep. Oh, okay. There's a huge chunk of notes here. So let me grab that as well from my perspective. Yoink. For the setting, I'd go with Discount Moon. That's a keyword we like throwing around here. Mm -hmm. um, Lauren Spires, Hover Infantry Secures. <laughs> <laughs> See, stuff like that. It, it's, uh, Cyber Ninjas Take the Glory. I'm not going to copy that over. <laughs> um, and then there's just a conversation between me and Chris about how awesome Battle Royale is. And while Battle Royale is extremely awesome, uh, irrelevant out. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! Hang on. There's actually. Uh... Oh fuck! There's. Uh... Oh, excuse my language. I apologise. Um, there is actually a post here that continues the story. See. Ooh. The sound of footsteps stopped. Dun dun dun. Let's add this to the end. Oh, hang on, no, this is here, it looks like. The well, sound I'm of confused. footsteps stop. Yeah, no, it is, it's here, oh, it okay. starts. It starts here, it's fine. All the information is there. Okay, so I think... 
it would be at the first order of things would be useful to just get an overview or get get a grip of what's here what we have uh, and then work out an outline based on the notes we have mm -hmm. and then mess it all up and put it back <laughs> together only better Where? Okay, so uh, one of the things we were talking about before we started recording was uh, one of the key things is probably to work out where it is, and I don't know if there are any notes here that say no, it doesn't. Okay, it's a bit about Lizzie. I think when I originally started, yeah, okay, I had uh, which switch perspective, blah blah. Uh, I imagine Cressa to be similar to Chernobyl. Uh, oh, that uh, that comparison to Chernobyl is because of the nature, like the nature taking back over. Um, okay, for the setting, I'd go with the discount moon. Almost suitable for colonization, but suboptimal in one of a few crucial factors and not exactly prime real estate. I've got amusing on that topic somewhere, yeah. Character wise, stick to lion, okay, yeah. Um, and there's the discount moon ramble. Okay. So we're gonna. Yeah, one of these suboptimal doodads. Read the story from the start. What you okay, have right let's... now. All right. Lion read the word scratched into the wall again. Oh no! You've been Just... abducted. Okay, stop there. Let okay. me let me do one real quick fix right here. This is a much stronger beginning, even okay. if it's just a draft. Oh no! You've been abducted! Lion read the word scratched into the wall again. Not a good start, and he didn't much care for the tone. Welcome to City of Caressa. As the daze and headache gave way to clarity and disbelief, he wondered where he'd heard his name before. Where he'd heard the name before. He pulled himself up using his aching muscles and inhaled sharply. A pain in his chest caught him. He coughed and spat blood on the floor. On his second attempt, the dry, dusty air stuck in his nostrils. Thirty people, down to one. Winner goes home. He blinked, then glanced around as though questioning reality. After a brief inspection of the sturdy block walls, the stone floor and thick metal door, he decided it was real enough to warrant concern. Lion took relief in the fact that at least they'd left him his clothes. A scuffed leather jacket covered his black and orange work clothes. As he looked down at himself, he remembered he'd been working his job at the scrapyard and had spent the evening enjoying a quiet drink. His eyes thinned. He didn't remember making it home. The bolt on the door slid back and landed with a clunk. He pushed it open cautiously and shrunk back as it creaked. As it started to close again, he stepped through into a dark corridor. What on break? Open mouth, he glanced down both ways, unable to see anything. A faint breeze blew across his face and hands. He clutched his waist as he stumbled for as mm. He clutched his waist as he stumbled towards the perceived source, muttering obscenities under his breath. Lion steadied himself against the wall and stopped on more than one occasion to gather his strength. It occurred to him that he wasn't in the best shape to deal with the events that potentially lay ahead. The dim orange sun dazzled him as he stepped out onto the floor of covered streets. His eyes watered and he held back a sneeze. The city was empty and Lyon felt it extremely unnerving. He wrapped his jacket tightly around himself and looked for a suitable route. Crumpling high rise. Crum crumbling high rise? Crumpling? Oh, crumbling high rises. Trees and weeds growing through the tears in the roads. Glass and brick detritus lay strewn across the streets. Most of all, though, Lyon found the silence to be terrifying. Okay, so let me mark this whole section for heavier vision okay because uh, point one uh, 
the city description doesn't stand up to scrutiny if uh, if we uh, apply the uh, world building if we try to adhere to the world building assumptions mm -hmm. so again what we what we have here is a 20th century western city planted on uh, on uh, a celestial body somewhere else which will not do it simply no. will not do <laughs> <laughs> the editor has spoken <laughs> yeah. but uh, but even even so uh, I'm not sure that the whole empty city setting uh, works too well here like okay. un unless unless it's a uh, unless it's a uh, artificial set made to look like a city uh, I would put this on the scrutiny as well. So let me see here. Oh, Tongli. Oh, Tongli. Yep, <laughs> that's a word. <laughs> it will be in Seeker too, just like talking. Carry on. I wanted to say something. What did I want to say? <laughs> Our tongue I'm doing a lot of uh, showing. Uh, I'm doing a lot of telling, not showing. In like, I'm um, spelling out a lot of lions, <laughs> what he's feeling, as opposed to. There was one bit that was all right because he sort of wraps his jacket around himself. As, as but I use that an awful lot in secret as mm. well. So, um, okay. As he fought to calm his shaking hands and temper the pain running through his body, he caught sight of a dust-covered sign. It had a dark red graffiti-style cross on it. Curiosity got the better of him. He steeled himself and started walking in the indicated direction, hopeful of finding a means to patch himself up. Lyon steadied himself against the remaining buildings on his path. He frequently tripped and stumbled over the fallen brickwork or metal framing strewn in his way. He reflected on his predicament and the unusual beauty of a city partly reclaimed by nature. He wondered what had happened, and why the city had been deserted. Mostly, however, he thought on the reasons as to why this was happening to him. Uh, just going to pause there for a second. This might be a better point to introduce some inner thoughts, now that we've added that to our skill set, instead of being like, <laughs> he thought on such and such, you know. Uh, of course, we might uh, skip it all together, and let's see, let me add here. I think I was doing this as a way to show time passing. Mm -hmm. But perspective-wise, I don't think this story uh, is following uh, one character close enough to even uh, uh, to even have inner thoughts. It's okay. More, it's more like maybe maybe he will mumble to something, or maybe he maybe he rubs his head and remembers something. So describe what he's doing, and uh, and uh, his actions and his uh, I don't know shrugging or grabbing or grunting or whatever mm -hmm. uh, will be the tools that uh, that convey that he's confused and alone and and uh, and all that mm -hmm. yeah it should be more like in this next paragraph it should be more of a reaction to his pain as as, as opposed to me telling the reader that there was a sharp pain in his yeah, chest yeah so basically what we have to do is we have to uh, think uh, think it clear to ourselves what the arena is like or this uh, uh, setting stage mm -hmm. basically and uh, and we will place this character in, uh, into the arena and then uh, since the uh, environment will probably have some element of adversity and or hostility in it 
he will start reacting to it. So basically, uh, I think it is useful to think of this uh, as uh, starting a new game. So when you when you start up a new game, you're often clueless. You're like, oh, how does this shit work? And <laughs> oh, what's that? And uh, what what are the controls and such? So yeah. uh, so imagine this as a let's play. And since the uh, since the arena masters or the you know the the management <laughs> is monitoring the people then we have the actual visual input point yeah yeah they they'll be monitored yeah yeah so this is this is this is a little bit like um mm, i don't know how well it will work in text but it is a sort of storytelling tool that's used for example in the webcomic uh, zombie ranch where the uh, where the characters are actually being uh, monitored by camera drones, and sometimes sometimes they just uh, do whatever they do, and sometimes it is highlighted that yep, drone such and such is currently uh, broadcasting such and such view. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like when you called them management. You make them sound so much more innocent than they really are. Um, okay, I'm going to continue. Mm -hmm. A faint buzz overhead brought him back to his senses. He squinted against the sunlight and caught a glimpse of a drone. It was following him, but changed course and disappeared into the buildings when he started paying its attention. Lionel tried to signal it, but raising his arms only caused a sharp pain to tear across his chest and, so and shoulders. As he turned, a scream echoed throughout the ruins. Lion's blood ran cold. He shivered and, and increased his pace. Okay, uh, so wait here. Oh. I want to write down some notes quickly. Okay. And when it comes to the setting, okay, and this will be point two. Mm -hmm. Ruinks. <laughs> uh, Ruinks is also so a word. Mm -hmm. I like work plants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
So yeah, uh, when it comes to describing the setting to the reader, uh, let's not say, oh, by the way, it's a, it's a ruined city. Mm. Instead, we shall say, uh, he creep, like he, uh, he uh, sneaked out from the corridor into a, into a lit clearing. Daylight, he mumbled. Is this some sort of joke? So basically, there there might be there might be like semi inner thoughts that he mumbles to himself, to himself maybe, but then sort of give it uh, uh, paint the picture like step by step uh, when he's coming out of the the place what he sees next and then what he sees and then what he sees. So again, use the the new game logic. Carry on. As he turned, a scream echoed throughout the ruins. Lion's blood ran cold. He shivered and increased his pace. Sweat ran down his face. He rubbed his clammy hands on his work shirt and considered taking refuge in the crumbling hotel across the road until he calmed down. He focused on the bullet-ridden glass sign at the entrance. He couldn't make out the name, but that same red cross had been painted on. Yeah, again, so... How does... Hotel? What... What even... Why would he even know it's a hotel? Why is there glass? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for that matter... Uh, we can't even take it for granted that there should be bullet holes. Yeah. So this is, this is all the uh, sort of basic uh, world building stuff that doesn't really hold up uh, to, to questioning. Uh -huh. uh, if, if we want uh, the story to actually take place in, uh, in the Chaos Nova setting. Yeah. As mm. you know, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh man. There's a lot of uh, he did, he this, see that mm -hmm. as well, which is getting on my nerves yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so maybe uh, another note to write down here is to make a short list of his goals, what he is trying to achieve. Hmm. So, experiences. Mm. So what I wrote down is that uh, uh, as we follow this character, let's make a list of his goals. What is he trying to achieve? Uh, what he what is he doing to achieve that? And what he is experiencing while he is doing those things. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we can say that uh, uh, ever since he comes to uh he wants to uh he wants to find a safe place he wants to make sense of what's happening to him and uh and he wants to know where he is and get away from there or like yeah he he might he might believe that in the beginning he might believe that he is still uh, wherever he worked, and maybe he just drank too much or something like. Is this is this a, is this, is this some sort of sick joke? It might be. So, uh, let's say to achieve this, he is exiting the the cell. He is making his way uh, out to the open, 
uh, he is looking around to find uh, something that could help him and he's he's making his way for uh, farther into the structures and then on his way he is seeing uh, he um, he is seeing what uh, what the light is like he is seeing what the local structures are like he is experiencing the uh, local smells and sounds uh, he is noticing that there are weird uh, noises coming from somewhere probably uh, that might be threatening to him and uh, and he sees some sort of bigger structure and uh, makes his conclusions about it and now so this 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 is a, a side note for our potential listeners uh, it's not that the first draft text or the first draft ideas are bad per se, but uh, having people uh, having people wake up and uh, and explore a derelict city that looks exactly like a derelict uh, uh, earth western twentieth uh, century city. Uh, overgrown that's that's been done a hundred thousand times so like mm-hmm. it's 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 not it's not that it's uh it's in itself bad but uh it's been done a hundred thousand times and uh if we if our goal is to make a story that put uh, that uh works as a as a story in the chaos nova universe uh, then uh, we have we already have a shitload of tools that we have worked out for ourselves to uh, set up certain homeworld logic. So it will be so much better to actually use those tools. Mm-hmm. And really, despite that story, that type of story being told hundreds of thousands of times, we the the reason. Our telling of it is hopefully going to be unique, is because it's it fits the Chaos Nova thing. Yeah, so it's like the story structure will be very familiar. Like it's uh, it's basically it's it's an escape quest. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a story that has been uh, told many times. There are certain elements that uh, might be uh, might be new, but uh, in its essence, it is it is not the very original story. So what we can uh, give from our part is to paint the picture of our world, telling this uh, uh, not so original story. Mm-hmm. Also, I want to show you the Pinterest board that. Ooh, this one is going into our do that viewing. Okay, I'm gonna s- I'm gonna share the screen again. Okay. Uh, share screen. Start. So this is our shared Pinterest board, and in here I have been gobbling up uh, assorted imagery uh, for world building and storytelling thoughts mm-hmm. and just, just inspiring and one of the uh, let's see can I if I open it up like this can I just scroll through the images I don't I don't know how Pinterest works just yet no I don't think so okay so let me just show you the uh, bigger picture okay so one uh, one thing that I have been looking into is different architectural solutions and uh, and using different materials and using different uh, structural solutions for example i don't know dwellings that are partially on the ground mm-hmm. and uh, when it comes to high-rise dwellings then dwellings that are at the same time uh, also uh, gardens and all 
also uh, arcology type uh, things where you have the or you basically have like a structure with its own ecology. Hmm. That's pretty badass. Yeah. And okay, so this is like uh, very clearly our time building, but it's it's overgrown. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there's that. Hmm. Yeah, let me find you some older examples. So, for example, a a city <laughs> that that is under the desert surface. That's I don't I don't know if, I don't know I don't know if this is an actual stuff that people are trying or if this is uh, a completely uh, thought up. And again, this this is all coming from uh, my personal irritation from uh, irritation of the uh, thinking that okay, there is a city, so naturally you will have streets for the cars, which for me speaks of the failure to ask any meaningful questions like uh, how did why did they build it there, uh, who built it, uh, what did they want to do with it. Uh, what materials did they bring with it? And it's also like if you're if you're setting out to colonize a new world and you are setting up a settlement in there, then uh, personal uh, vehicle fetishes aside, why would you plan the city to function the same way as uh, uh, as the current era older cities are functioning? Because it's the the current era cities function the way they do, not because that's the good design, but because they have developed that way. So it's like there's they have their history behind it, but this uh, if you build something from scratch, it doesn't have that history. Here's here's another one of those multi-level thingies. Oh, it throws me back to the top. Okay. I hate it when the yeah. image searches do that. Yeah, I think I will. I will open them in new tab. So yeah, this board has a shit ton of uh, shit ton of uh, urban landscapes, sci-fi and and real. That looks amazing. This this one uh, this one could al almost uh, work as a uh, small smaller example for the terraforming yeah. uh, expedition ship, or like small smaller colony ship. I have also, also uh, I have also gobbled up uh, a shit ton of uh, examples from nature. So I think the most recent ones are cityscapes, but oh, this is a good one. This is like one of the the speeder bay, mm. or you know the personal transports. Hasn't loaded for me yet. Yeah, it's. I, I will. I will let it load in the background. <laughs> let it brew. <laughs> I will just scroll you through the uh, uh, through the thumbnails. Oh, this one, it's like a uh, hanging monorail-ish thingy. Uh, is one possible solution for the seeker uh, speeder thingy. Although, uh, in that case, uh, I, I'm still not sure if they do actually have a physical thread, or maybe it's only uh, magnetic projection. Mm. Uh, that keeps the uh, keeps the vehicle on track. That's <gasps> cool. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the little mechanics of <laughs> 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 the maintenance crew. Excellent. Mm, what else? So yeah, uh, when you when you do have a chance to dig into this one, uh, then you will find that I have uh, I have added. You know various settlement shapes and various settlement 
sizes and also various uh, dwelling shapes and sizes uh, but also <laughs> all sorts of nature do that <laughs> so like there's uh, the mm, sort of nature chaos symmetry like bubbles mm -hmm. and, uh, and fractals and such and fungus <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and squiggles and uh, squiggles and branches <laughs> mm -hmm. more architecture Oh my god, is that s is there them faults there? They used to be part of the same network as Sealand, didn't they? I think. What, what, what? This? Uh, no, down and to the right one. This? No, 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 go left, go back left a little bit. This? This? Left again? Yeah, them, yeah. I think they used to be part of the same network as Sealand. Coastal defence faults. I love seeing stuff like this. Could be, could be. Although I can't remember. This one might be. Thems. Yeah, Thames Estuary. Yeah. Ten uh, pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thames bitches. I might have taken photos of them with my own camera on the way to <laughs> super busing. Part of the Estonian tour. Oh. That's awesome. And now we get now we get to more fantastic structures like all sorts of spiring and <laughs> and tunneling and stacking and uh, and that's, sprawling. That's awesome though because the amount of roof roof space there would uh -huh. provide for a lot of solar panel place and green yeah. place needed it. Yeah, exactly. And when you have uh, when you have the sort of uh, I don't know. Bulging, bulging and branching buildings like these, then you also uh, increase the surface area. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, some of some of these uh, examples here are just flat out our time. Some are concept art, but some are also uh, from our world uh, poor solutions. In other words, inventive solutions. Yeah. Can't remember where this was. Door balls means it can't be very wet. Okay, it doesn't have any info on it. You seen the cow? Is it Kowloon Walled City? Yeah, I just mm. pinned it uh, to the top. Oh, was that? Oh, okay. These ones are cool. Are these like the breathing buildings? Uh, I think this is. Uh, is or is this something? the 3D printed one? I think it's a little bit of both. Like it, it has. Uh, I think this is more like uh, dwellings or build buildings that are also access ways and and also double as garden spaces. Mm. I don't know. Uh, I have I have the pin of those uh, smoke scrubbers uh, down below somewhere. The ones that they basically 3D print with concrete or something. I'm a big fan of the hex mm -hmm. buildings, the hex stylings. That's awesome. Hexes and doodads. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, I'm in my uh, architecture streak oh. here. These are awesome. Oh, is that the underground New York? train station that they're trying to turn into a garden? Uh, I don't think so. I think that one is more groomed. Oh. This, I think, is some random landscape architecture. Okay, I don't know what this is. Uh, I, I don't have a good context for it. But, for example, this image would be something that uh, that might be useful for the uh, uh, for the ongoing story. Mm. And I was also thinking, like some some sort of industrial doom, <laughs> 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 as vague as that sounds. Doom. Oh, I already. So apparently, I have uh, I have double pinned certain things, or like pinned duplicates of certain things, which like. Arr! So not uh, not relevant to this story, <laughs> but all sorts I of uh, ocean these. ocean dwelling thingies that are also like processing plants at the same time. Uh, 
those are something I want to keep my eye out on. This one. And this one, actually, uh, this uh, pattern or this structure uh, mimics, uh, I think, I think uh, it's some sort of algae. Oh. Oh yeah, here we have the the smoke scrubber. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, buildings, buildings, buildings. I should have should have some spaceships coming up in a moment. So yeah, this is this is uh, most of these are very sort of uh, optimistic utopian style sort of or vi visionary style stuff so this uh, this is not directly useful for uh, for the Cabresa story but this is this is like the material that I've been gathering uh, as a sort of general source material for thinking thinking through the, the f uh, future cities like where, where the designs come from are those like, fractals yeah I learnt all about fractals in Nemo, <laughs> the science museum, so I'm up on fractal knowledge right now. <laughs> uh, fractals and strange attractors. Oh, I didn't S learn about those. Uh, strange attractor is... Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a thing about chaotic patterns. It's like when you have, when you have something occurring over and over, uh, I don't know your daily, your daily uh, uh, pacing route. It, that it that it's it's kind of random, but at the same time you seem to be uh, treading one corner of the corp carpet a little bit more. So that corner of the carpet is the attractor. Oh. So it's like when you have this sort of pattern, 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 and you see and you start to get. Uh, like more dense uh, occurrences in some area. I think I think that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a chaos thing, basically. Talking of chaos, uh, as we so frequently do, there was a triple chaos pendulum in Ooh. the science museum, which was amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's a very good example for the attractors, for example. Example, oh, example, okay. example. So uh, <laughs> when the when the pendulum uh, does its its thing, uh, its path should be random, right? So it's like mm. yeah, it it has its sandbox where it moves, but how it exactly moves in the sandbox you can't predict. But at yep. the same time, there will be certain spots that it will favor during this uh, during this random. Uh, swinging, so that's those spots will be the strange attractors. I think that's how it works. This is excellent. I am keeping up with all of this because of recent vi visits to educational See? facilities. See? So See? it's all coming together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've come up to some character models. Nice. They're all very handsome. <laughs> yeah, sci-fi art tends to be. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's one thing that I remember somebody pointed out uh, uh, pointed out uh, uh, I, I don't remember what the topic was but I think somebody was commenting on their own writing and and said that uh, somebody had told them yeah but where are all the ugly people <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they they all tend to uh, tend to uh, to sort of neatly fit into similar frame. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess that's when when we're talking about video game character art that that's sometimes kind of a uh, kind of a thing to work with. Mm. I, I love the uh, mech, mech with, with jump jet, jet uh, or not jump jets with this. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. These look like turbines. Sense. Yeah. Shroud oh, I think they're shrouded turbines. Mm. And they look badass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one here uh, might again provide us uh, 
something for the ongoing story. Maybe maybe not Ooh. all the way, but like the atmosphere here. I'm getting a very syndicate feel from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nice. a bunch of cyberpunk stuff here. Uh, also, maybe this one. Let me open this one as well. I will close the ones that we did, were not using. Here, some some more uh, urban transporting stuff. And oh, like more. the personal transport pods. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. We need to change that. Uh, make a. I'm, I have made a note in the document, but in Taken Flight um, Scrap Heap, which is like the second chapter with Corey in trouble, uh, Corey, in the original story, he's got a boat to Haven, and in the most recent story, he gets a personal transport pod. I want to put it back to be in the boat because the boat mm. is much more interesting, and mm -hmm. he also has a conversation with the guy on the boat as opposed to being left with his own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay, here so. is another point that might come useful to the current story. So, if our uh, happenings happen on a moon, mm -hmm. then uh, one uh, one thing that gives our uh, poor protagonist the idea that we're in we're no longer in Kansas, yo, <laughs> is if uh, if he uh, notices a planet in the sky. Yeah. Like, Whoa, hang on. <laughs> that's not usually there. Yeah, like, uh, that's, that's not there. <laughs> oh, I like that. That looks like a train in in Netherlands. It just goes on and on and on forever. It's awesome. <laughs> I think you've seen that photo as well. Ooh, this one. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, focus. Let's get back to the main board. <laughs> Let's see what else will it give us. Uh, okay, so to get there, cool. Yeah, and I have various uh, various big structures here. Ah, now I'm coming to the place where I have been on a spaceship streak. Uh, so this uh, big thingy, some some sort of big thingy, might also be. Uh, something that fits into the Caressa st setting, but the big thingy might be dilapidated. Mm. So it's like a defunct big thingy. Oh, I already had this. Okay. <laughs> this one could be useful for the uh, initial... Outrunners! <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. cool. I like that. But the uh, uh, the uh, cell where he where uh, where the dude wakes up in this story should be more primitive, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is also like th there's some water processing here. So this is like this is where you want to spend time in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is where you volunteer. Mm-hmm. So, man, there's a fresh supply of water there. I'm already up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sign me up, yo. Yeah. That's a badass looking knife. That's mm -hmm. proper future tech shit right there. Yeah. That's hardcore. <laughs> and I think this is this is proper real. That's awesome. Okay, this is where I was uh, pinning the uh, uh, more abstract, abstract doodads and components. So none of these on their own uh, are useful for this story, but some sort of big ass hole like this might work in the setting. And I think I had some pods and uh, and and such in here, pods and cockpits and and doodads. Yeah. Oh my. Pods and booths. Oh my. <laughs> Oh, have you seen the drone with arms? Ooh, There's a well. When we're done with this, uh, look up the drone with arms because mm. it's it's a bit unsettling actually. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange. Oh, Robo Gorilla and Robo Scorpion. Yeah, Robo Scorpion. <laughs> 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 Oops. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so now here. I have been on the machinery streak. <laughs> I don't know what this little guy is called, but uh, this gave me the name Scarab Drone. 
or he's something. He's cool. He's a quadruped of some kind. He's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> Oh, and that, um, the single propeller sort of thing in the mid, uh, yeah, that one, uh, I think that's a UAV, uh, mm. from Metal Gear Solid, potentially. Could be. It looks very similar. Yeah. And they shoot you too. <laughs> <laughs> Not nice. <laughs> I love all these. Oh, is that the, uh, 3D printed arm brace? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so this is an actual photograph. Mm-hmm. Not all of these are sci-fi. Some is nature, some is uh, uh, abstract art. Okay, yeah, we're getting into the tiny abstract art streak here. Look at that chaos! <laughs> <laughs> uh, none of this is very useful for this story. So let's let's slide over this. Oh, the he the hexy thing back there, super satisfying. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> All sorts of sploosh <laughs> thingies. This is the good kind of chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and this reminds me. Let's add some um, potentially defunct, uh, potentially partial machinery. Oh, that thing looks awesome! <laughs> what is it? Like a Obsidian single track. Vehicle hauler, media arts and animation or station. Let me see. It's pretty badass. I'm gonna. Oh, it's, it's investigation so nice. begins. Yeah, it's so nice when they give the original well, the link to the artist and such. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so some some sort of uh, maintenance or or industrial vehicles is something that I I would pepper around the uh, setting. The and nice thing about stuff yeah. like that is it looks like it can work. Like mm -hmm. it looks physically able to do its thing. <gasps> That mech on the left there is like wildcat, <laughs> old school mech. They're all awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and also an additional thought, uh, again, setting thought uh, about the uh, vehicles is that those could be the more obvious, uh, uh, the more obvious uh, uh, loot locations. So this is like, it's like in the beginning when you are in the tutorial area you will be shown how to pick stuff up and how to crush boxes and and where to find weapons and where to uh, where to find food items etc so when the dude wakes up then i think the immediate area should feel dangerous but uh, by using gamer logic, you would you would be able to say that it's actually uh, the uh, it is essentially the tutorial area, like where mm -hmm. you have big fat uh, uh, big fat graffiti pointing you towards uh, towards a loot box. Ah, okay, so here we have some sleek it, designs again. Yeah, carry on. It's kind of got that tone already in a way with the message on the boards. Mm -hmm feel i think yeah, we're definitely sort of in the right area with that mm -hmm. yeah so we just need to uh need to push it a little bit and refine it mm -hmm. <laughs> these are awesome yeah and i can see uh, in the in the very beginning i will have a whole bunch of uh, zaha hadid's uh, designs mm -hmm. but here is one i also Booker. love the blimp the blimp yep. is great as well. <laughs> Keep it in mind for the blimp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this sort of setting is already too much, I think. Yeah. Uh, That's better suited to somewhere like Archaeos, I think. Yeah, and and Archaeos, some sort of backwoods place, mm -hmm. not, oh, yeah. not the not the. Uh, Whatever it's called, where Joel lives, we don't. The I don't think I don't think we ever came up with a name for it. 
Oh, while well, we dodged a bullet there. Nice one. <laughs> These uh, mechanical arms are pretty sexy. <laughs> sexy. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> no, they are cool. I oh, know. I think. I think. Uh, let's do it. Oh no! 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 It's gonna uh -oh. come back in the beginning, won't it? Can you not click the X in the top right corner and it will take you back to? Uh, yeah, but I think I I have I'm pushing it here. I have opened quite many of them. Oh 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 okay. <coughs> For a second there, I thought that it will stick <laughs> stick around, but nope. Come on now. We're almost done here. I will not torture you much longer, Poward. Oh, some some sort of crack in the uh, crack in the rocks, or like implied secrets. Mm. Uh, is another keyword. So so again, uh, I think let's let's get our game logic on. Uh, so there will be the obvious loot. There will be the uh, extra extra credit or extra challenge areas. There will be uh, the danger danger zones. <laughs> There will be some shortcuts, maybe, and also secrets. Secrets! Secret! Damn, man, Pinterest is annoying for this shit, man. Yeah, and now that I have like a million tabs open, that's not helping, of course. Okay, I'm almost there. But yeah, uh, my thinking is that this area that our not so brave protagonist finds himself <laughs> in, mm, it shouldn't have obvious uh, dwellings, or like if if there are dwelling, if there are habitat units, those habitat units uh, should be tied to some sort of industrial operation or whatever, or like. Abandoned mine is a good keyword. I think Storm Eileen has just hit us. Ooh. Yes. Come on, so. Eileen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a post going around that was like, oh, if, if gun owners in Florida are shooting the hurricane to turn it around, then maybe we should come on Eileen to get ours to turn around. Oh. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's the uh, first storm of the season, so I think our summer is officially over. Yeah. I don't know, we we kind of had a, well, not like a proper storm, but kind of stormy wave. And after mm. that, we had like a proper warm wave. Oh, nice. Uh, this picture here, will this fit our uh, current mood? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let me open this one. Also. Open a new tab. New tab. Yes, good boy. I mean, that blue light in the distance, I was like, oh, maybe it's a bit too much, but like the blue light in the distance could be like a drone or something, and, you know, yeah, peeking around the corner and, looking for and people. Besides, these these pictures will, uh, will function as a thinking aid. We don't have mm -hmm. to use them literally. Yeah. It's like inspiration. Yeah, that's that's what this is for, the inspiration board. I love the E.D. Sputnik. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. It's uh, hammering it down out there. It's a good thing we're not trying to do this ten years ago, that when a rampant rainstorm such as this would have disconnected my internet because the uh -oh. lines would have been flooded. <laughs> uh -oh. So it's a good thing we've had the upgrade since then. Oh, dear. Yeah. Okay, past the sploosh section. Okay, here's one. This one may be too jungly. Hmm. A lot of the uh, buildings that are very green centric and the ones that uh, seem to add more greenery to the planet than the space they're taking up. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of that in Ruel mm -hmm. and Ruel style buildings. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this inspiration can be used for that, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think, kinda, maybe, yeah, okay, yeah, these, 
this is where I was on a ship's streak. Ships we don't need now. Uh, this sort of industrial complex. Uh, let me open this one as well. Open new tab. And maybe some pipings. Ooh. I like the uh, color palette on that one. It's sort of like a mm -hmm. dark and browny, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and uh, here's another thing to consider when you find yourself. So when when you're knocked out and find yourself on a different homeworld where you didn't expect to be, uh, then uh, that system's sun and that uh, celestial body's atmosphere are probably somewhat different, even even if they are tweaked and optimized and whatever, but they might be somewhat different, so the color scheme might be slightly off. So, uh, the way it might go down for our guy might be that he's observing something and and uh, he feels that something something is off, uh, rubs his eyes, thinks that something is wrong, but he can't quite put his finger on it so it's like so it's like he might be grumbling to himself and thinking and like uh, what's 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 wrong here and then he notices that uh, the shadows are uh, are the wrong hue and and oh there's a big <laughs> planet in the sky well fuck. <laughs> I think that would be my reaction as well well fuck <laughs> <laughs> well fuck <laughs> what have I gotten myself into now yeah, so at first, let's say he is crawling <coughs> out of that uh, prison area, <coughs> mm -hmm. or the, the rookie er noob area, and, <laughs> uh, and he sees daylight ahead, and maybe at first he's relieved, and then he gets somewhat outside. Maybe there's some half uh, shaded area, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna get outside, I will be safe. And then he notices that uh, that the light is light spectrum is slightly off, and mm. uh, and uh, and that the shadows are a little bit wrong. And then he scrambles to get outside proper, and he sees the he sees a patch of the sky which is slightly wrong color. And then he scrambles even farther out, and there's the planet, <laughs> and the oh fuck moment. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I think I'm reaching the, the kind of uh, where I started the board because I remember I have pinned some of these quite early on. Uh, more duplicates. So all sorts of landscapes here. Again, various city solutions. That's nice. I like that one being built into like a canyon. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, and this is where all the nature doodads are starting to come, like uh, all sorts of pollen and plankton and and uh, and roots and such. What is that? Oh, sick! Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why would it have been anything else? This is this is intended as a shared board. Remember? Yeah. I love all the uh, sort of pipework buildings as well. We've got a refinery down the road from uh -huh. here. There's a lot of that. Yeah, um, I, th I think I don't even need to open these because this is the sort of picture we can imagine. Yeah, these are awesome. Oh yeah, suits. Love the biotic spine that, that the neon biotic spine mm -hmm. that these records. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey yo! It's awesome. Set a connection. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, more duplicates. <laughs> so yeah, cer I see that certain certain images have have captured my attention twice, and if it's. Like, if you're trying to pin the same image twice, then the system will alert you. But, of course, if it's uh, another copy of the same image, then it doesn't. <laughs> <No>. Aww. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Okay, here. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. So here's where I have all the nature shapes. Mm. I remember that I have uh, saved some of these or some some of that kind as uh, ship shape concepts somewhere for the future this one for example and this shape or, or similar shape was used in one of those uh, island dwellings I think artificial islands okay I'm starting to get to the beginning so yeah these are the uh, Hadid, Zaha Hadid's uh, designs and it's like I think this one is not the building this one is actually a bracelet <laughs> but <laughs> it looks exactly like her buildings <laughs> so they're like, really impressive yeah yeah and it it looks it, it looks so so right mm. or like I don't know it's like Look so I wouldn't say natural, but y you get the idea. Pleasing to the eye. Yes. Pleasing to the brain. Mm. Oh, so I had one more of these as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, and this is something that could work for this setting as well. And again, all sorts of mega structures, spaceships, cities. Last sphere. <laughs> yeah. And infographics. Okay, let me close the main area now. And I will I will only keep the ones that are useful. Oh, okay. So this is like straight out to Doom Free. That's pretty cool. This one, this one, this one. What's this? I think this one we don't need. Yeah, this this is too much. This is not for the current story. Uh, That's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we will we will keep these in our heart, but yeah. uh, for the current story, let's close them down. Sealand is a location in Outrunners. Uh, oh. A group of people tried to get to the continent, but ended up shipwrecked on Sealand oh. and are now awaiting rescue. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Silly billies. <laughs> Silly bean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one we shall keep open. This one. I think they tore all them forks down. Oh, uh, after all the shit with Sealand happened because Aww. they didn't want people doing a repeat Aww. because originally the geezer Roy Bates was going to use it for private or for a pirate radio station <laughs> uh, but then he decided to turn it into his own country and then the government were like well shit we should probably get rid of all these other faults uh, to prevent this happening again <laughs> bit of a shame but yeah Okay, so these will all stay open. Mm -hmm. So this will be like this. W some somewhat similar view will be will be used quite in early stage, or mm -hmm. like this. Well, not not this image per se, but uh, the point that he is coming out through some sort of uh, dark place, yeah. crawling towards. Uh, daylight and he will find some daylight ahead and initially he is relieved and then he notices that something is off and then BAM <laughs> <laughs> okay I, I will stop screen sharing now because uh, I think that's slowing some shit down as well okay ah <laughs> Something crashed, I think. <laughs> what? What, Skype? Come on, we can do this. And boop. Okay. 
So now if you if you want to view one of those just tell me and I will share again. All right, cool. Meanwhile, back at the lab. Mhm. Mm Let me write down the ideas that I got while I did that. So there might uh, <laughs> this this might be going too far, uh, so you don't have to use it. But there might even be uh, a certain environmental obstacle that he can only get past once he has mastered some elementary uh, some elementary skill. Like let me think. There's something in Doom Free that you had to do. Kill demons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bad example. Uh, uh, let's say life in Lifeless Planet, you have to occasionally operate a robotic arm on your uh, spacesuit or like a grapp grappling thingy, and uh, there are certain areas that you can't get past unless you have used it. But uh, that one. That one is easy, but uh, there are there are certain points where, let's say, you have to push a boulder and you have to step on a boulder, or or you have to remove a boulder from somewhere, so that you could carry on. So in this case, there could be that uh, there are some things stacked on the way that are too heavy to lift on his own and there are various uh, methods that could be used to break through that barrier so it's like uh, there might be some explosives nearby there might be a forklift there might be a ladder and uh, once you once you break out from your quote unquote spawn area it's on mhm mm so it's like <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's like what what if the first task uh for uh, Leon or whatever his name is uh that he he doesn't realize that this is this is the game on moment <laughs> but basically uh basically his first task is to break out from from his uh, spawn area or the tutorial area <laughs> so Ignore the vocabulary that I'm using. I'm using the uh, the sort of game master's vocabulary here. Mm -hmm. He he doesn't think like that. So this is the this is the situation that he will be put in. But uh, for the observer, he is in the in the spawn box, uh, working through that tutorial area and breaking out or solving the obstacle that blocks the way uh, out of the tutorial area. Yeah, and uh, he would want to get out of that area because reasons. So there, there has to be some motivation for him to want to go farther away. For example, he can see, uh, he can see a source of water. He can see a vending machine. The uh, uh, the uh, 
luring uh, what's the word the allure yeah the uh, the flickering allure <laughs> of a uh, uh, of a half broken vending machine it, it's probably it's probably it's probably making some uh, buzzing noises and yeah. and blinking <laughs> to catch more attention so it's like uh, he he will he will be alerted to the uh, to the fact that that there's some food and drink outside of the safe area of course he won't know that it's a safe area but <laughs> <laughs> so in the beginning Needs motivation yeah so that that will be the uh, the bait that uh, gets <laughs> him out to the drain <coughs> <coughs> The bait. So, he, he, uh, so basically, he begins indoors. Mm -hmm. He is informed flat out that he's been kidnapped and he is now in the uh, in the tournament. He might not believe it in the beginning. Is this a joke? Uh, he will try to make his way out. Uh, on his way out, he will start noticing that things are not uh, quite the way he's used to. Uh, he's used to normal, and uh, once he uh, once he gets outside and gets a glimpse of the sky, he will uh, know in no uncertain terms that mm. he is indeed elsewhere. He will then. Uh, explore the immediate area and uh, notice uh, notice uh, signs and and instructions <laughs> break the barrels to get goodies inside <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. like the beginning mm. of Nox mm -hmm. uh, break the walls to find secret areas <laughs> eat food to restore health that that sort of thing and uh, and uh, he he maybe sits and despairs for a while, and then the uh, flickering and and buzzing of the vending machine catches his attention, and uh, the first part or the, the first segment will end with him uh, breaking out of the tutorial area, and this is where we shall cut to the uh, to the management guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds good. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And this is this is our this is the beginning of our outline. Uh, as for the management guys, I think uh, I will want to use some of the dialogue that I had already in the notes. You want an ice cream? Yeah. Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> So it's cold. gonna it's gonna need some uh, some tinkering, but I think uh, I think the dialogue notes are are more or less uh, hitting the the right notes. Yeah. What do you think of this one? And this is where we tell that there are like dudes in corporate jumpsuits or whatever. Yeah. And like, do you want to? bet on this one and one of them's like yeah, he's not gonna last the night mm -hmm. bants some classic bants between the various characters <laughs> mm -hmm. okay I will I will uh, note it down
end, lest I lose some footage, I will stop the recording here and start the new. Okay. It is also very appropriate because we figured out uh, the uh, start bit. So there you go. Nicely done. See you in the next one. Bye.